Dear God, please help me to overcome my lust. Amen. Does that sound like you? In today's video, we're going to be talking about overcoming lust. And we'll be going through Galatians chapter 5, and I have three points for you. And by the end of this video, you will understand how you can satisfy the Spirit to overcome your lust. Okay, my name is Brian. Welcome, everybody, to this channel. Welcome to everyone who is new. Welcome to everyone who is returning. The purpose of this channel is to help everyone to become not just a listener, where I'm just listening to the Word of God, but a doer of the Word of God, where I'm living it out in my life. Also, I use a free version of this app called Logos, uh, which helps me with all of my word studies to prepare for these sermons so I know what each word means, so I don't take anything out of context. So you can actually download that. I want to give that to you so you can study up on your own time or even just check if what I'm saying is accurate or not. Let's get started. People often pray to God to heal them of their lust problems. Do they not? I know I have. I know you have too. That's why you're here on this video. But I believe that there is a biblical command that many people, including me back in the day, that we were missing out on that people weren't talking about. We're going to be reading from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. <clears throat> it says this, <clears throat> But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It is that clear. Just walk by the Spirit and you won't satisfy your sinful desires. If you are following the Spirit's desires, you will not be following the sinful desires of your heart. Let's talk about the three points so that you can all understand what's going on here and then learn how to live it out in your life. Point number one, what are the desires of the flesh? We need to go over these first because you need to know what the Bible has put all together at the same level. Not one is higher than the other. Not one is lesser than the other. All of these are the desires of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19, it says this, Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, verse 20, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, verse 21, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a lot of stuff. They're all at the same level. They've all been lumped together. Those are the fleshly desires and things like those. Let's talk about now the desires of the Spirit. Chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit, you know this, you know this, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So that's what the desires of the flesh are and the desires of the spirit. Point number two, now let's talk about satisfying the flesh. What does that look like? Why do we need to talk about that? Because we need to know that all of us at one point before coming to Christ, we all satisfied the flesh. Think about this. When you didn't know Jesus, when I didn't know Jesus, when we were living to satisfy our sinful desires, when we were satisfying the lust of our eyes, men and women alike, looking at people passing by, satisfying the lust of our minds, thinking about the things that we would do or imagining the things that we would do. And sometimes those lustful thoughts and uh, things that we saw led to lustful actions, but they didn't result in res remorse. They didn't result in shame. They didn't result in us turning to God, Lord, forgive me. This was before we knew Christ. You know what? Actually, it felt good, if you want to be real. It felt good to give in to that sin, to give in to the lustful temptations, to give in to the lustful desires. And actually, it's easy to satisfy the flesh. Think about it. Think about how painless it is in the moment. Think about how alluring the temptation is. How effortless it is that you don't need to do nothing. You could just follow the flesh. It doesn't require any hard work. And of course, the writer of Galatians knows that. God knows that. And you know that. Because we, you and me both, we've done that. Now, instead of satisfying the flesh, which is easy and effortless, which is what we used to do when, before we came to Jesus, now let's learn about satisfying the spirit, which is more difficult, but is what we got to do to overcome lust. Point number three, how do we practically satisfy the Spirit? We need to take action. That's all you got to remember. We need to take action. 
You need to take action. Same verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But I say, get, walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The reason why I gave you that app in the beginning called Logos where I do word studies is because I looked up this word walk. You can look it up too. It is a verb which means you have to take action. It is not a suggestion. It is not anything where you could just passively sit there. You have to do something. You have to walk in the spirit. You have to take action. There are two things you can do to take action. The first thing, many of you are already doing this, it's to pray. I started out this video saying that, Lord, please deliver me from my lustful desires. Many of us pray our way through our lustful desires. Ask God. If you're not doing this already, but I believe that you probably are. Pray about it. Pray to God to help you live by the Spirit and to satisfy the desires of the Spirit, which are the fruit of the Spirit, remember? But point two, when I said in the beginning, there is a command that many of us are missing out on. You have to practically live it out. You have to take action. Walking by the Spirit means that you need to exercise the fruits of the Spirit rather than exercising the fleshly desires. Specifically about lust, the fruit of the Spirit, self-control, that is the command, that is the fruit you need to exercise. You need to exercise self-control. Is that easy? No. It's very difficult. It's actually painful sometimes in your mind. You want to grind your teeth because it's so hard. And sometimes it's even very frustrating because it's not effortless like satisfying your sin. Satisfying the spirit takes work. It takes action. But that doesn't matter. You want to know why? Because what matters is that you are walking by the spirit. It doesn't matter that it's difficult. It matters because you are not walking by the flesh. You got to do the things that are difficult. I don't think you're a Christian today because you think it's easy. And one point I got to make is though the world, we, we have so many tools, we have accountability options, tools, apps to help us overcome our struggles, which I don't find anything in the Bible says that those are wrong. So if they help you, good. But none of those are mentioned in the Bible, which suggests that God's word is applicable for any generation and any struggle that we go through. Because this is not a lust issue. This is a sin issue. And God's word speaks about sin very clearly. So God knows, God knows that what we're going to struggle with, His Word is more than enough. Living by the Spirit is more than enough. Nothing else would be needed. So remember that, okay? So you know what it's like to satisfy the flesh. It's easy. It's temporarily enjoyable. It leads to eventual shame and remorse. But you now, now that you are in Jesus, you also know what it's like to live out the fruits of the Spirit. Specifically with lust, living out self-control, it's difficult, it's frustrating, and it's annoying many times. But the end result is becoming more like Christ. Everything that Galatians 5 offers to fight lust is by living a spirit-led life of self-control. Not relying on an app or another human being. And God clearly knows that doing that is more than enough to overcome your sin. Lastly, God is faithful to forgive us of all of our sin, even when we mess up. But there is no excuse. We still need to work at living for the Spirit daily. Thank you everyone for watching this video. To everyone that is returning, thank you for watching these videos. If you would like to support me further, you can check out my Patreon or you can invite me to come and speak at your church. And if you're new and you've watched this far into the video already, consider subscribing or watch a few other videos before you subscribe and make your choice to follow this channel. Don't just be a listener of the word, be a doer of the word. Amen. Peace. Love you guys. Have a good day, afternoon, night, wherever you are. See ya.